Hey there once again folks, welcome to another Train Sim World 2 video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newly released DBBR 187, another red box for the German lines in Train Sim World 2. Uh, this one is by uh, Skyhook Games and our train is rolling backwards. <laughs> just, just a hot minute here. Never a dull moment when I'm trying to do something. Let's go ahead and put the parking brake on. There we go. Things a bit loud at idle. And uh, I didn't want to just leave it there making a ton of noise. So Anyway, let's try that again without it rolling away into a uh, certain disaster. Alright, anywho. DBBR187 by Skyhook Games. Yes, Skyhook. They are not new to the scene uh, with Train Sim World or Train Simulator. They've done models in the past, uh, and they are the group that released Cane Creek, which probably single-handedly one of the worst uh, add-ons released in my eyes. You know, because I'm biased, American, American root. What are you gonna do? But uh. Anyway, let's see if they can kind of pull one out of the bag here and redeem themselves with this thing. Um, for those that may not know, and I only know a tiny bit, we'll go over what it is. This is a DBBR-187 for like the 10th time. I've probably said that. Uh, it's a Bombardier Trax uh, family locomotive. I think this one is essentially the Trax 3. Uh, it's, a, it's an electric loco, obviously. Uh, they started building these in about 1996 to present. There's over 2,000 of these puppies uh, on the rails today. Uh, standard gauge, and there's a larger gauge uh, that they make these for for Spain and Portugal. Uh, they have a top speed of 87 mile an hour for freight and 99 plus with certain conditions uh, for passenger services. Max horsepower, 7,500 HP. Uh, and it's also got this cool thing called last mile functionality where it's essentially got like a diesel generator of sorts that'll give it uh, a little extra room to run in case there's no electric lines in say a port, a yard, uh, you know, a short line, anything. Um, I think you can go up to like eight hours on it. Uh, as long as you don't go so fast, I think you can go around like 30 or 40 kmh, which is, you know, fairly slow. But uh, if it was doing something in a unelectrified yard, you know, that that last a while. They are also remote capable, so you can control these by remote. And they operate in over 20 European countries, these things. So, uh, there was one for Train Simulator. I don't have it, sadly. I always wanted it. Don't have it. So we got one for Train Sim World 2 now. Um, what you're going to get is services and scenarios for Kalun Aachen. So, you don't need anything extra for that alone. Kelowna Aachen is part of the original uh, Train Sim World 2 bundle. So, it was like Bakerloo, Sam Patch, and Kelowna Aachen, I think. Um, it adds 54 services to Kelowna Aachen total. And then, out of those 54, 20 of those are brand new services, uh, including this engine here before us. Uh, it's, you know, I'm going to get a little salty again, like with all the German stuff and Train Some World 2 substitution and layering out the wazoo. So this thing, get ready. Uh, Risa Dresden, 112 services. Hamburg Lubeck, 25 services. Munich Augsburg, 27 services. There goes a 422. You can probably figure out where we're at. Uh, Hauptstrick Rhein Ruhr, 20 services. Rhein Ruhr Austin, which is where we're currently sitting, 13 services. Mainz Passart Bahn, 193 services. And Ruhr's ignored, 57 services. So there's a lot of damn playability with this thing. Probably the most in the game, or the most I've ever seen. I don't know. I'm sure that's not right. Um, but there's a lot. Um, so anyway, it's on the Steam store, $19.99 US dollars. Uh, as always, I'll post the link down below if you need help finding it or locating it. 
but it's a damn good looking engine just sitting here looking at it and the photos they produced um you know the media for for upcoming and uh you know all that they they didn't really do an article i don't think uh it was kind of like hush hush like here's some photos this is coming that's it uh people were kind of skeptical for one because it's skyhook um and i've you know i i know there's there's people that that live in the future in places like australia new zealand all that that, that get stuff earlier than we do on the other side of the globe and i have not looked at anything i've read a few things in passing some negative marks and some positive marks uh, but i like everything i want to go in this with fresh eyes um you know just to just to check it out for myself so anyway let's go ahead and take a look at this puppy it looks you know modeling it looks really nice it really does uh the bumper's got that nice kind of just, you know, metal being rubbed off and rubbed on and paint, sticky things. Those look nice. Um, you know, the pipes and the hoses under here look nice. The hook looks good. The uh, the pilot, or the uh, cow catcher, whatever you want to call it, wherever you're from, that looks pretty cool. It's unique. Very pointy. Uh, the model itself honestly doesn't look bad um it looks fairly similar to what these things look like in real life um you know it's a shame that we got another one in just db traffic livery red or whatever the heck it's called um it'd be nice to add a splash of color to the uh german roots but uh anyway it, it looks pretty good i've noticed a few strange things it's not happening here but on the numbers on the front um i was playing around with it on kalunak and and the 147 on the right would kind of have this weird shadow effect, but the 187 on the left would not. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, it was kind of weird. It's not happening here. Uh, we'll take this thing for a run in a minute and see if it happens again. So weird shadowing on the uh, the numbers and text there. Um, you know, it looks good. It, it looks up to par as far as, like, Train Sim World stuff. Could be a little sharper right through here um, looks kinda funky that the headlights look kinda low quality compared to some of the other stock in Train Sim World 2 um, not the best this handle right here though does look nice this kinda chrome handle looks very nice looks fairly realistic as well let's look at the undercarriage here it's uh... it's dirty you know it looks like it's been used quite a bit which is nice um, gonna be blatantly honest I've, I've you know I've got some fondness for European locomotives and German stuff but 90% of this stuff right here these numbers and letters no clue no clue I'm sorry can't comment on that rail pickup these things can operate uh, or some of them anyway between DC power and uh, overhead uh, and of course the, the diesel so they're uh, they're multi-powered engines um, go ahead and turn on the HUD here see if we can click things can't click any of those those look pretty low poly Yeah, I mean, it looks good. Modeling-wise, it looks pretty darn good. Um, I'm not 1,000% sure on all these stickers and decals on the bottom. I'm sure some are wrong or the wrong shape or size or color. You know, there's always something like that. Um, I mean, the paint and the weathering and the texturing on this thing look pretty spot on. Uh, now, I do have I and I settings. This is also on PC. Um... So it may look a little different to what you may have seen or what you may see if you decide to get it yourself. But it looks, you know, it looks pretty good. Just seeing the old, uh, the cracking on the clear coat there, either, either that or just water that's dried on, you know, streaking down the side. That looks pretty nice, gonna be honest. It's a cool looking locomotive, you know. 
Compared to like some of the other German locomotives in this game that we currently have, one of my favorites is easily the DBBR155 and the 101. Uh, but this one's, you know, it's got the looks. It, uh, it looks pretty cool. The horns, pretty low, low res, low poly, low texture, <laughs> kind of flat. The roof looks all right. The pantograph, um, you know, of course, I've never seen one of these in real life. Sadly, it'd be cool too. But uh, YouTube and the Google are your friends when it comes to stuff like this. So, uh, you know, it looks pretty legit from what I can tell. Now, it doesn't come with any rolling stock, sadly. It kind of uses rolling stock, uh, you know, from everything else in the game. But why don't we go ahead and hop in this bad feller. All right, we are inside. It is quiet. Go ahead and pop the light on here. All right, so just like a quick run through here, this is a little bit different to a lot of your German engines in the game and engines as a whole in the game. Uh, what you're going to want to do, and also I'd like to know, just to cut in there, there's no manual, you know. Um, as bad as King Creek was, uh, this guy hooked it a manual for it. And it was a pretty good manual covering, you know, signaling and things of that nature. Uh, as far as I can tell, there's no manual uh, for this, sadly. Anywho, um, the interior looks good. This seat looks good. It looks, you know, fairly well textured. It's got that, like, ribbed look, almost. Um, you know, it's it's fairly similar to some of the other German locomotives in the game. It's got some nice decals and whatnot down there. Uh, it's probably missing some real decals, because a lot of Train Sim World stuff is branding, lawsuits, all that fun stuff. Uh, but the seats look pretty nice. That one's got a headrest. That one doesn't. That sucks for the uh, second one. Not very comfortable. Windows should open. There we go. Got a nice little clip at the top there. It does sound like there is sound occlusion as well. Open. Dang it. Hello. There we go. Close. Okay, yeah. So it does change. It's got a nice... <laughs> sound. Uh, you know. Dry glass and all that good stuff. Um, but it does look pretty good in here. Got the speakers. The weathering uh, on the walls and the ceiling and all that good stuff. Like, it looks pretty good. This light, that's a nice color, you know. It's not bright white burning your retinas. Um, I don't know what's going on with this sticker here, the VMAX 140 KMH, because I think... Uh, <laughs> well, freight... In, in most Germany and Europe, uh, this thing's going to run, like I said, up to 87 miles an hour. So, uh, passenger, the, the passenger average speed is 99, I think. And then it can go higher. So, I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Maybe that means like the very, very, very max, max, very, you know, the tippy, tippy, just in case it had to run like super high speed. But anyway, again, the art... In here looks really good. You can get a little coat rack sitting over here. Here's the other door. Very thick. Two handles. This thing is extra AF when it comes to handles. Got your uh, fire extinguisher down below. The floor looks good. It's got that, um, you know, that look like plastic, whatever it is, uh, with little little bits of something in it I don't know the technicalities on the floor I don't know uh, the diamond plate foot things look pretty good down there they look alright little texturing itself on the desk that looks pretty good this little thing over here is new this isn't in another train some world German locomotive I don't think you cannot touch anything sadly on it I'm assuming it's air conditioning or something by the looks of it you can hit that big red fun button, but, uh, you know, it's up to you whether or not you want to hit that or not. Mid mid speed and run. Uh, one of the kind of cool things about it, like, um, I don't know, say the ACS-64s, you can go 
in the engine room, which is, uh, you know, it's fairly neat. You can walk between cabs, uh, so that you're going to want to pop on the light here. There you go. So it's got your engine room. It's got a little peephole. Here's your basic controls right here for your PZB, CIFA, all that good stuff. I don't know why it has CIFA. I will never, ever use it because it's super annoying. Just like that pop-up right there. Sorry. Uh, now, some stuff in here looks good. I've, I've kind of done a quick run-through uh, of this area as well, but a lot of it is just very low quality. Uh, like, like, you know, last minute or, you know, kind of gave up on the, the modeling or finishing it out. I don't know. It uh, There's some weird, like, lighting issues, as you can see. Uh, but some of it looks okay. Um, like this panel here, the wall, that looks pretty good. The floor looks pretty good. This all looks good. And then you kind of come around the corner back here. Uh, I think that's cab two back there where we were. This is cab one over here. And then you got like this, which I'm going to pop the light on. It's just, like, just not modeled at all. Uh, it doesn't look very good. I mean, the decals, the stickers look all right, but, like, this cabinet right here, too. <laughs> it just looks completely unfinished. Uh, it's weird. And then you go back over here, and it's still kind of, eh. It's just very uh, Roblox-y, Minecraft-y. You know, you could just take a screenshot of this right here and convince someone you were not in a game that could handle very nice looking graphics. And then this. Bit of a joke. That's, uh, you know, it's, you know, if you're going to do it, do it well. Otherwise, just leave this area locked. I mean, and of course, cab one, pretty much just like cab two. We're going to head back that away, try and get this puppy started up and get down the road a bit here. Uh, for the sake of the video and smoothness, I'm not going to turn on PZB. I suck at it anyway, and uh, it'll just make things more difficult. <laughs> so this is not this is not going to be a PZB review, uh, if you will, so my apologies. All right, so... Let's give her some breakage. All right, we'll go ahead and pop the machine room light off. Now, the activate cab is already lit, okay? When you get in an engine and it's started, it's going to be on this, the zero. So all you're going to do is come over, hover on that, and then hold it for a couple of seconds, and you'll hear it kind of come to life electronically. Uh, this, of course, is your parking brake and park and brake release. I'm going to try and go ahead and release it. Same with the cap. You're just going to hold it down. There you go. It is lit. This right here, the signal lights, um, I think you can set it to manual. Their tail lights are off. But you're going to want to leave it in auto. Um, this down here, you cannot click. You cannot click that, that. That's the machine room light. And that's your battery. Same same with this stuff right here. If you're starting out, uh, if it's cold and dark, it's going to be off. You're just going to hold this. And it's going to pop that puppy on. Let's go ahead and pop a squat. There we go. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is the glass. Uh, it's quite dirty. It's like it uh, ran through a waterfall of used grease or something. Uh, motor oil. It's... It's pretty darn dirty. Like, it, it's kind of cool that it's there and that it's just not extremely clean, but that could be tuned down uh, quite a bit. I'd say at least by half, and it'd look a lot better, just to me anyway. Because when you look at the exterior, it does not exist, really. I mean, it kind of does. But not so much, so it's kind of funky. Anyway, as you can see, the pantograph and the type of train that this is, flammables, combustibles. I believe that's the wrong pantograph. Uh, so we're going to switch it to that one, which I'll try and display here as well. Go ahead and get the cab light off, get the desk light on. All right, this thing does not have a traditional key or reverser in the sense either, so all you're going to do is just hit reverser off if you want it neutral, forwards, 
backwards. So you're just going to pop it on. Boom, it's set. There's no brake key in this, like a lot of the other German locomotives. Um, let's see if I can remember what I'm doing here. All right, ah, we want to change the pantograph. So normally in some German engines and other electric engines, there's a switch or a toggle where you choose one or two or both. In this, it is not like that. You've got to use this right here. So you're going to want to click the eight key. Uh, now, I'm going to butcher this name, Strum, Strum up. Stromabnehmer, I think the third option. So you're gonna that's essentially a pantograph. That's what it means. So you're gonna want to go down to the third one. Uh, now it's gonna display these down here. So it's got auto SA1, SA2, SA1 plus two. So let's see two. So we're gonna pop two, and then it'll say it right up here SA2, and then you're gonna hit enter. And that should do it. I'm going to click it like 500 times just to make sure. All right, so that should be set. Oh, crap. Sorry. I didn't lower it first. Might need to do that. So we'll go ahead and lower that back one. There it goes. All right, let's try that again. So, SA2, enter. Hopefully that will stay. All right, let's see... Pentagraph, main circuit breaker, train line. Da, 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 da. All right, so let's try and raise it now. All right. It is arisen. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to want to do the main circuit breaker. Close that. Complete the circuit. You'll hear a little... Frrr. There you go, it's your sound, and then train line, start, and active. We should be ready to ramble here. Okay, so your headlights, once you set that on the back wall to auto, this is your headlight switch right here. Uh, there's headlight bright and reduced. Going to leave it on reduced. Here's your uh, cab light control, by the way. Another thing you're going to want to do is go up to Sinaloitin, Sinaloitin. No clue. Sorry. Um, so go back up to number one. Hit enter. This is your headlight control. So it obviously shows you cab one, cab two. So all you got to do if you're like, where am I at? Just look up. The number's right there. So we're going to hit two. Right there. It is now blinking. We're going to hit it again. And now it's white as, you know, in the headlights. Hit enter. And then the home screen. There you go. Let's check. They are on. Very nice. They are on. If I'm not mistaken, I think most German railroad uh, is supposed to have like a three-point light safety system or some kind of something like that. Uh, you can mess with a few of the things here like this right here. Shows the uh, individual traction motors. Uh, I don't think this does anything. Um, not sure what that is. It doesn't seem to do anything. Or six... Looks like a brake shoe of some sort. Uh, two, no, one, no. So nothing a whole lot different there. There's brake over charge button. Got your wipers, horn. All right, recycled sounds. Right on, Skyhook. Jeez. That's already, like, just changed my mood. <laughs> just with a horn blast. I mean, did they not learn anything from Cane Creek? That F Union Pacific 4400 was ridiculously stupid. It uh, it did not look right. It had a lot of things wrong with it. Sounds were bad. Um, you know, sounds are necessary uh, with simulators. Train simulators are no different. We need good sounds. That... Is a recycled horn. Now, I know a lot of German uh, train enthusiasts probably don't care because they don't really use the horn in Germany, which is totally fine. Uh, but it still sounds like crap. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, we are in gear. Got a train brake. Let's go ahead and release it. We're on Rhein-Ruhr-Austin. 
We're not going to do the whole thing. We're just going to get this thing moving. Kind of sounds like recycled sounds again. Give her a little bit of juice here. Now, this thing has got a unique sound in real life. So, let's see what they did here with it. My god, that's loud. Sounds like a friggin' helicopter turbine engine starting up or something. It's insane. Okay, so the sound's wrong. Uh, the Trax 3, or the 187, does not sound like this. From what I've heard. Are we about to pass a red? No, we're good. I keep forgetting signals on the uh, right. Yeah, this just, this just sounds like a straight copy. Copy-paste of the 185. They straight ganked the run sounds off the 185. <laughs> when you're, you, you're traveling along at like 100 kmh steadily and that thing's going <laughs> non-stop, it gets old pretty quick. Now, Dovetail changed some of the sounds and actually fixed them on some of the other German locomotives, uh, but they it sounds like they took the sounds from the 185 when they were broken and they used the broken sounds instead of the new sounds even had they used the new sounds yes they would have still been wrong but it would have been a better wrong no now correct that sounds a better wrong but uh yeah these things don't really sound like this go and go and watch a video go on youtube uh, type in tracks 3, uh, BR-187, whatever. Watch a video. You'll see what I'm talking about. This thing does not sound like a, uh, a 187. At all. I'm afraid to even open the window. Yeah. So they... They totally buggered the sounds, man. Man, I I think uh, <laughs> German train sim enthusiasts are not going to be happy about that. And uh, welcome to the club as an American train simmer. Welcome to the club. I'm sorry. I really am. Like, it'd be nice if the sounds were good, but, uh... This is what we, as American train sim enthusiasts, have been dealing with for oh so long. Recycled, crappy sounds. Uh, it's a, it's a shame. You know, how hard can it be to get some decent sounds? Um... You know, it's just another one of those instances where they just kind of went with the model, like, oh, it's pretty... Let's leave it at that, you know. Now, as far as physics-wise, this thing doesn't feel overpowered at all. Like, it took quite a bit of electrical juice to get moving. Uh, now, it's a relatively heavy train, but I also tried it out on an intermodal train on Risa Dresden, I think. And, it, you know, it takes a moment to get moving, so it feels okay. Um... Uh, physics wise I guess but uh, the sounds are such a letdown they're such a huge part of uh, a simulator of any kind you know aircraft motorsport uh, uh, cooking I don't know um, you get the gist though like <sighs> that sucks it's a, it's a shame, because, like, this could have been another one of those total packages, you know? Like, uh, Mike Gotts 
stuff, TF, the TSG stuff, like that DBBR101, that thing is uber, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that thing. It's got it all. Everything. The whole kit and caboodle. This, this could have been close. That is so loud. You probably can't even hear me right now. La, 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 la. I mean the model does look really good. Let's try and uh, let's try and get some brake action here on it. Now German locomotives and trains break very strong. And uh, this seems to kind of fall into line with that. <laughs> God. That sound. Uh, the real 187 has kind of like a stepped uh, sound to it. And I, I believe there's only like three or four kind of steps in the, the musical notes that the uh, this engine produces. So... Whoa. Invisible wall of sound. All right, we're going to try and turn on PZB here. Just, just for the heck of it. All right, it's on. LTB is going to be off. And CIFA, I could honestly care less. I want to rip that thing out. I hate CIFA. I get it. You know, I get what it's for. But it, in this, it is annoying. Having to clear it like every 2.7 seconds. Not a fan. Uh, okay, so PCB is on. Let's see if it works. What kind of sounds it makes. All that good stuff. Release the brakes. Give her some juice. You will get some wheel slip as well. Uh, earlier on, Reese addressed and kind of playing around with it. It did give me quite a bit of fuss um, under heavy power. So we'll try and do that again here. Just max power of this puppy. Now, I don't know if these screens are inherently correct either. The only thing I can really tell is that this screen right here is normally over here, I think. And then this one is normally over here. Okay, we're not getting any wheel slip. Uh... But I, I did get some wheel slip on um, Risa Dresden, so... Okay. Maybe it was just a heavier train. Yeah, it was going nuts, though, so... It was nice to see. Alright, Uber Wang Chung, fit, uh, 45 kmh. I know that's not what it says, but uh, I can't read it correctly, so... Alright, so we're limited to 45 kmh. Let's see... Uh Let's see what happens here if we actually screw up or have a, uh, a signal we don't clear. Now, as far as, like, a thorough PZB uh, and all the magnets and their powers and all that, um, you're not going to get this on this video. Sorry, I'm still looking into PZB. It's uh, it's interesting trying to learn it and, and figure it all out. Um, and it's just... It adds that cherry on top for, you know, Train Some World and the, the German stuff. Because um, I, I honestly probably play the the German stuff more than anything else in Train Some World. I just feel like it's simulated better. It looks better. Like, a lot of the routes just look downright much better than some of the other routes. Uh, not only that and the layering. Like, the problem with a lot of other routes and trains in the world is, you know, you're only going to have like one or two, maybe three trains if you're really lucky on one route. Um, the German routes, it's, you know, dozen sometimes. Half dozen. Easy. So there's, uh, there's quite a bit. 
Alright, so we cleared that 45. It's now at 55. I want to try and trip it here and see what happens. See if it actually uh, does what it's supposed to be doing. I don't know if we're going to get a, uh, a bad signal, though, so. That sounds reused. Yeah, it's, uh, meh. You know what, let's just go really fast and see if it actually stops us as it should. Uh... There we go. There's a little bit of wheel slip. There you go. So that's decent. That's decent. Let's see if it actually stops us here as it's supposed to over speeding. I believe we should get a warning first and then if we don't break, there we go. The the G the Geschwindig Kang Shrek Tung Alright, well, it seems to work. So it should effectively uh, break you, and then if you take over the brakes, it should, if you react in time, I think. Uh, let you release the brakes and just get under speed, but it looks like it's actually going to fully stop us here. Woo! That is loud. My, uh... My ears are going to be hurting uh, with too much of this thing. Again, it, it, it kind of stinks. Dang, I hate even saying this, but I'm you know, hopefully someone in the modding community can do something about these sounds, or, you know, the developer themselves, that would be grand, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen, because it rarely does, you know. A lot of stuff for Train Sim World, Train Simulator, whatever, gets released, and that's it, you know, deal with it, kind of. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully that uh, can be corrected, that would be very lovely, uh, if it could. But we'll quickly go over some of what you get here. We'll switch route and go to Kalonakin. Show you what you're going to get. Oh, that's not it. Where's it at? There it is. Explore scenarios. Let's see. All right, here we go. So this is drop and go. Empty wood wagons. Blah, blah, blah. Siding to siding. Trip to Aachen. Uh, yeah. they, they sound interesting, I guess. The uh... Oh, wow, there's four? Okay. That's alright. That's better than... That's better than three. Sure as hell better than two. That's alright. Although, I, like, I, don't, I don't normally do scenarios anymore for whatever reason. I don't even have a reason. I just do services. Uh, so yeah, you got four scenarios. That's pretty cool. They're all on Kolonak, and of course, now your timetable. So you got your 187, continue. This is the timetable for Kolonak, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be timber, mixed freight, um, intermodal. Let's see, that one's a mixed. Yeah, intermodal, timber, mixed. So it's quite a bit of variety, although they, they all seem to just be A to B. <laughs> How fun. Um, we'll back out. Now, I don't have every single uh, German route, or Train Some World 2 route for that matter, installed on my computer just for the sake of saving space. Because, uh, you know, when it comes to having this game installed on your computer, it's it likes its data. It likes the megabytes, so... Um, let's see. Rhymer Austin, that's what we were just on. And uh, let's see. And one of my favorite German routes, even to this day. I like RRO. God, that thing is loud. It's annoying. 
Uh, let's see. Intermodal. Petroleum. I think it's some mixed cargo. Yeah, so there's quite a bit here. You know, it's not as much, but... And then we'll take a look at... Let's see. Navarco Dresden. Explore timetable. 187. So it's got a ton. ton. What I say? I think I said it's like a hundred or something. Yeah. It's over a hundred. There's quite a bit. A lot of it's going to be samey same. But what's cool about these is you can start up here in the north. Uh, what the hell's it called? Uh, Ruderal? Yeah. So you can either start in like Ruderal or Risa. Which is uh, kind of cool. I don't think there's anything much different. Although you can see in some of these, they do use a different... Uh, side of the route itself so some of these will use the east tracks and some will use the west tracks as you can see they're uh, on the menu to the right back out back out again let's see what else Amber Lubeck once again a ton a ton of routes and services this thing subs in for uh i think it's just about every friggin german um route in the game barring rapid transit because that is a commuter route solely there's no freight on that route if it is it's maintenance away or something very rare but uh that's it just want to kind of to quickly go over this new dbbr 187 um now, something else came out today for Trains in World 2, the 1938 uh, underground stock, which just looks, in my eyes, kind of not worth it at all. It's just, you know, it's just the Isle of Wight stock on the Bakerloo line, so I'm, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, but this, this is a new locomotive, just more to add to the German stuff, which... Uh, you know, I, I happen to like in Trains in World 2, so, um, you know, the sounds suck. It's a shame they were reused. Not only reused, reused from the old bad ones. So it it goes to show you how long ago they did it, and they just kind of left it. You know, they, they poured the concrete and let it harden, you know. They didn't even care to go back and try and fix the sounds. Um, but we'll see if they do. Uh, you know, I guess they were busy with their their lawn mowing simulator so uh they did this they did seem to do that right so maybe they can start doing some train sim things right but uh you know i never try to do reviews this is not a review just a look but uh you know barring the sounds i'd say yeah i give this thing a thumbs up it looks great and it's got a just absolute mega dump truck butt ton of playability uh there's a lot you could do with it um so, you know, if someone makes a, a sound mod, that would be fantastic. Or if Skyhook's like, hey, you know, we'll we'll fix this. We're sorry. That would be awesome, too. But I wouldn't hold your breath. Um, but, you know, aside the sound, it's it's a pretty nice locomotive. Um, I like it. I'm going to use it. But uh, that's it, guys. My uh, I hope my lack of German knowledge on trains was uh, not too lacking. And uh, somewhat informative, the video. But uh, that's it for now. I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching, as always, guys. Take care.